Welcome back to the Mr. I1 YouTube channel. If you're interested in personalized patch and liner analysis and having a video created regarding your direct patch and liner line, consider becoming a Patreon member. There is a link in the description of this video. Two ancient DNA pre I1 samples discovered in the Gallery 1 grave at the archaeological site of Warburg in Germany. The first sample was analyzed in the 2024 study Neolithic Yersenia Pestis Infections in Humans and a Dog. He was labeled Warburg underscore one, and he lived some time between 5,291 and 4,979 years ago. The other ancient sample was analyzed in the 2025 preprint Long Distance Kinship in Megalithic Europe. In the preprint, his skeletal identification was WB1028. Both of these ancient pre I1 samples belong to the Neolithic Wartburg culture. And since they share the same pre I1 paternal haplogroup and the same maternal haplogroup of K1A, and they both radiocarbon date to approximately the same time, and since they were both discovered in the same Gallery 1 grave in Warburg, Germany, I think it's highly likely that they were closely related, possibly even being brothers. So the question begs, if they were closely related, possibly brothers, why do they only share an additional 10 SMPs on family tree DNA's haplotree since their patrimonial line diverged apart from I1's patrimonial line? If I had to guess, I would say most of their Y chromosome base pair locations lacked the sufficient amount of reads to meet family tree DNA's criteria for calling new SMPs. And this might explain why their current subclade has an unknown age estimate. This theory is corroborated by the fact that both ancient samples had four derived reads of cytosine for the IFTG12121 SMP, which is far more than the one or two reads I saw at the vast majority of their Y chromosome base pair locations. Unfortunately, these two samples were analyzed in two different studies. So as far as I'm aware, no kinship analysis between them has been done yet. The two Warburg samples had combined Y chromosome coverage for 182 out of the 300 plus phylo equivalent SMPs associated with I1. And they were positive for 75 of those, including M253, with a 41.2% I1 SMP rate, I predict that their patrimonial line branched apart from I1's patrimonial line around 18,065 years ago. But I just want to stress there's a lot of gray area with these age estimates for ancient DNA samples because the vast majority of their Y chromosome base pairs only had one read, and sometimes they had less than optimal mapping quality. This age estimate is interesting because it's pretty close to when the last glacial maximum ended in Europe approximately around 19,000 years ago. To be quite honest, I'm not sure why or how family tree DNA came up with a mean age estimate for this patrilineal divergence that's around 6,000 years more recently in time than my rough age estimate. In the 2019 study, Survival of Late Plasticine Hunter-Gatherer Ancestry in the Iberian Peninsula, another ancient DNA pre-I1 sample was analyzed from the archaeological site of Balma Guiana in northeastern Spain. In this study, he was labeled BAL0051, and he lived some time between 13,380 to 12,660 years ago. This is another reason why I think family tree DNA's mean age estimate for the IM253 subclade might not be old enough. Mr. BAL0051 radiocarbon dates older than the mean age estimate for this common ancestor. Now, Mr. BAL0051 had pretty poor coverage, only 32 SMPs out of the 300 plus phylo equivalent SMPs. And I also want to preface that I never looked at his BAM file myself. I'm going off the data of a fellow researcher. So allow a lot of gray area with this age estimate. But if we go by the same logic of using the I1 SMP rate 
We would predict that his patrimonial line and I1's patrimonial line would have diverged apart approximately 18,912 years ago. So once again, right around the end of the last glacial maximum. Going off my age estimates, I find it quite interesting that both the Warburg patrimonial line and the Spanish patrimonial line from Mr. BAL0051 both seem to branch apart from I1's patrimonial line around the same time, shortly after the last glacial maximum ended in Europe. And the fact that both of them were found in Western European locations, could this be indicative of where they might have wintered during the last glacial maximum, perhaps in the Southwestern Refuge? I don't know. If my age estimates are correct, it would imply that the M253 S&P occurred quite early on in the bottleneck, potentially sometime during the last glacial maximum. Another pre-I1 sample was analyzed in the 2019 study genomic history of the Iberian Peninsula over the past 8,000 years. He was discovered at the archaeological site of Cueva de la Carigula in southeastern Spain. Mr. Carr 1 lived sometime during the Mesolithic, sometime between 9700 and 5500 BCE. Similar to Mr. BAL0051, Mr. Carr 1 had pretty poor Y chromosome coverage, and I've never looked at his complete BAM file myself, but going off the research of others, there's not much we can glean from his data. But if I had to guess if both of these ancient samples had the proper Y chromosome coverage, I would guess that they would share some additional SMPs in the Iberian Peninsula since they branched apart from I1's patrimonial line. In the 2015 study, tracing the genetic origin of Europe's first farmers reveals insights into their social organization Another possible pre-I1 sample from Neolithic Hungary was analyzed. He was labeled BAB5, and he had two derived reads of thymine for the M253 SMP. Unfortunately, though, since we now know M253 most likely occurred early on in the bottleneck, we really don't have any telling information regarding when BAB5's patrimonial line might have diverged apart from I1's patrimonial line. Furthermore, Mr. Bab 5 was never carbon-14 dated. He was assigned to the Neolithic LBK based simply on the archaeological context where he was discovered. Furthermore, most of the studied sites were inhabited throughout several archaeological periods. With no carbon-14 dating, with no autosomal DNA analysis comparing it to other Neolithic samples, with only one I1 SMP analyzed, can we even be sure the sample is pre-I1? Especially when we take into account no other pre-I1 samples have been discovered from Eastern Europe? I don't know. Hopefully one day in the future, a scientist will take it upon themselves to do a more comprehensive analysis of BAB5, considering the dearth of overall pre-I1 samples. Another pre-I1 ancient DNA sample in the 2018 study, Population Genomics of Mesolithic Scandinavia, investigating early post-glacial migration routes and high-latitude adaptation. He was labeled SF11, and he lived sometime during the Mesolithic, sometime between 9,023 and 8,760 years ago. He was discovered in a cave named Stora Forvar, the cave of Stora Forvar, situated on the small island of Stora Karlsel off the west coast of Gotland in the Baltic Sea. Similar to other Scandinavian hunter-gatherers from the Mesolithic, Mr. SF11 was a mix of both Western and Eastern hunter-gatherer autosomal DNA. I believe that his pre-I1 lineage would have arrived in Sweden from southwestern continental Europe with Western hunter-gatherer tribes. Mr. SF11 had the worst genome coverage in the entire study. As a result, we were not able to retrieve that much data for his Y chromosome. Going off the data of a fellow researcher, he only had coverage for 19 SMPs associated with I1, and he was positive for nine of them, for an SMP rate of 47.4%. Based on this rate, I predict that his patrimonial line and I1's patrimonial line 
would have diverged apart approximately 16,645 years ago. But I want to stress, though, that with such low coverage, this is a very rough age estimate. That being said, though, I do believe that his patural line is slightly more closely related to I1's patural line than either the Warburg samples or the Spanish samples. This theory is corroborated by the fact that Mr. SF11 was derived for certain I1 SMPs that either the Spanish or the Warburg samples are ancestral for. The pre-I1 sample, which most likely is our most closely related pre-I1 lineage to I1, was analyzed in the 2023 study, Paleogenomics of Upper Paleolithic to Neolithic European Hunter-Gatherers. He was labeled OST003, and interestingly, he lived approximately around the same time as the Warburg samples, sometime between 5,314 and 5,052 years ago. He was discovered on the small island of Tannenwerder in Lake Ostorf in the city of Schwerin in northern Germany. Unlike the Warburg individuals who had mixed with and adopted Neolithic farming, Mr. OST003 maintained his Mesolithic lifestyle despite being surrounded by these farmers. He was a fisher hunter gatherer on Lake Ostorf. From an autosomal DNA perspective, the Warburg individuals from the Warburg culture were a balanced mix of both hunter gatherer and early European farmer DNA. Mr. OST003, on the other hand, had greater than 90% hunter gatherer DNA. Mr. OST003 was positive for 55 out of the 60 I1 SMPs that he had coverage for, for a rate of 91.7%. Family Tree DNA gives a mean age estimate of 4249 BCE for his IL840 subclade. And this is very close, only a few centuries off from my own age estimate of 6,501 years before present. Mr. OST003 was ancestral 4A for the S63 SMP. And Family Tree DNA chose this SMP to be the name of the most current I1 branch instead of M253. You might be wondering, how could so many phylo-equivalent SMPs be associated with a branch that's only a few millennia younger than its parent branch? Well, the reason why is because Mr. OST003 didn't have the best Y chromosome coverage. Had he better coverage, he most definitely would have been positive for some of those 206 SMPs. It appears that every pre-I1 sample analyzed to date most likely connects to I1's patrinal line sometime after the last glacial maximum ended in Europe. So it's quite possible that only one pre-I1 lineage survived the last glacial maximum and those harsh conditions and would emerge from their refuge. After branching apart from I1's patrinal line, the Warburg patrinal line would survive in Europe for millennia as first hunter-gatherers and then as farmers. But only I1's patrinal line would survive the arrival of the steppe influence Indo-Europeans. Thanks for watching. <music>